This project is called Room, and it's inspired by and a variation on escape rooms, which are games where people solve puzzles and clues and challenges to try to get out. And I was interested in how that model could be used to tell a story about women who are actually trapped, who are actually enslaved, and how people's expectations about gameplay could open them up and disarm them to learn something new about people who many people don't know a lot about. This is probably the most interactive project performance yet, so you know we have an audience who comes and actually talks back to the women, hears their stories, and then gets positioned in the various rooms as a kind of substitute for the audiences that would have been present in those women's lives. So Tipti Buzz on trial and the you know, participants are kind of standing in for the jury or, um, I don't know, the judge, the people who would judge her. I serve as, as Hope, who is kind of guiding people through the room, and people start by being introduced loosely to what they're going to do. They have an hour to make their way through the women's rooms and they have an hour to escape and unlock these women's stories. And then um, they're introduced to the first woman who's Phyllis Wheatley. She's an enslaved poet. And I was interested in figuring out how to both have her be trapped in the room literally in some way, but also reference the ways in her life she was trapped and constrained by the construct and the conditions of slavery for her as a, as a black enslaved artist. People move through Phyllis Wheatley's room. She kind of opens a, the next door and it happens, you know, one door opens after another and the doors are opened in many ways by the women as much as they're opened by the participants. It was pretty clear early on that it was gonna be about light and shadows and um, a way of playing around with how a figuration appears. So, you know, whether a dress gets propped up with a broom and seems like a scarecrow, or whether a shadow is being cast, or whether um, candles flicker. I was interested in how the aesthetics of an installation could suggest a certain otherworldliness or the presence of other beings in a space. And sometimes at night, I do think that there are people here. <laughs> People seem surprised at the information they learn, so there's a lot that gets learned in the game. There's kind of games that you play that are fun and things you're discovering and puzzles, but then at the same time, there are these narratives that often are new to people about how hostile and unjust the past was. So it's interesting to see people learn two different things at the same time, kind of watch their, their minds work around that. And then at the end of the game, People have to answer questions and tell their own stories. And it's really been fascinating to see people struggle to answer questions they've never been asked before. And then other people feel very comfortable or seem to be very fluent in answering those questions. And to see how as a group, um, all of that question answering strengthens a kind of sense of purpose for the group which is part of what an escape room is. It's like a purpose, you're trying to get to the end, but this one proposes a slightly different purpose over the course of the, the rooms. On a basic level, they're asked, you know, what have you learned from Tituba? What have you learned from Sally? What have you learned from Phyllis? But then the questions get personal, like, when were you first aware of your race? What can we do to live less segregated lives? describe a white space or name a white space. And I've had to workshop the questions a bit because I tend to go quickly to the layers in the question, but um, often people will answer with one, one word answers. And I'm trying to prompt a little bit of a deeper digging into those, into those questions. There's a question that asks, how do we make space for outsiders? And someone said that they are an outsider. So that was not what I expected and that was very useful and I think useful to the group to hear. I'm having really good conversations after the fact. I'm getting people excited about doing research on their own. I am thinking of ways this can be reproduced and travel and exist in other places. I'm getting more ideas, like people to add. We were just talking about Madam C.J. Walker who um, was a pioneering hair professional, um, one of the first millionaires, black millionaires in America, and we were just debating her in the other room. Uh, I'm getting to know Cleveland, and so I think it's really delivering on everything I dreamed it would, and I think it'll 
do even more um, moving forward. It's an ongoing story.